All right. Hi, Leah. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. Yeah. So thanks for doing this with me. I, I really appreciate your vulnerability and willingness to have the world here um, <laughs> all about your diet. So thanks. Yeah. No worries. Figure so, if I can help someone. It's good. Yeah. And it helps me too. Yeah. Right. We're killing two birds with one stone. I hate that saying. I don't even know why I say it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself and what you want help with in your nutrition. Um, I guess I am 31 climber. Um, just started like working on 12s this year. Um, got my first 12C like Sunday, I think. So Congrats. exciting. Yeah, thanks. Um, and kind of like nutrition wise, I guess kind of not really sure like what I should be eating to get the best performance. I know I've had a lot of like issues in the past dealing with like fatigue and things like that. And I don't know if it's associated with what I'm eating or I'm sure like there's things I could be doing to help manage it better. Or, like during the day climbing, like what should I eat? When should I be eating the things? Um, and my boyfriend's a climber too, so he kind of knows a little bit more than I do, but he's also much larger than I am. So we definitely have totally like different amounts that we're eating and like different styles that we're eating. So I guess like help with it all, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. And just so people know you, for the people who are watching on YouTube, yeah. I thought that your background was fake. <laughs> like a zoom background it's not so where it's are not. you right now i am in a little town called woodstock maine um or it's like right at the base of shag crag um which is kind of like a rare granite climbing area up in new england cool all right um, so yeah well cool. and so are you on a trip right now um, I actually moved out here to a little, my boyfriend brought property out here in April, I think. So we've been here for the whole summer. Okay. So it's been pretty great. Yeah. All right. Great. And I was kind of asking just cause I'm curious, but also because, yeah, yeah. you know, being on a, a trip is a little bit different than being at home and, yeah, for and sure. like, what you can. So do you have all the comforts of home there with cooking? Um, yeah, mostly we've got, a stove and like fridge air fryer um mm -hmm. like pressure cooker so it's not like we've been just eating like instant mac and cheese the whole time <laughs> okay all right cool okay so what i heard is that you um are looking to know a little bit more about what to eat when to eat and for performance but also because you're feeling fatigued throughout some days of climbing yeah. and, and not climbing yeah yeah Okay. And I know I do consume a lot of caffeine, so I don't know. I've had, like, occasional sleep issues, but I don't know if it's related to that or not. In the past, I have gone off caffeine for a month and haven't really noticed anything too different. And I've been trying to, like, not drink coffee or anything after, like, 11 or noon. Um, but sometimes if I'm climbing a lot, it just feels like I need, like, a little extra energy and maybe I could be doing that with like eating better but for now I've been just like I'll just have more caffeine <laughs> okay all right and when you say you drink a lot of caffeine how much is that um probably like two or to three cups of coffee in the morning and then I'll bring like whatever extra coffee I have to the crag or sometimes like some energy drinks also um but not more than like one energy drink a day and then whatever coffee i've been drinking okay and when you say the rest of your coffee how much might that be um probably like another two to three cups i would say okay and when you've experimented with not having it did mm -hmm. you feel any difference in anything or just not in your sleep um not that I really noticed in anything. It felt like my days were kind of about the same. Um, but I guess maybe I wasn't paying as close attention to that as I could have. Um, but I guess overall, I didn't really notice a huge difference. And I didn't really get like any withdrawal headaches or anything either. So 
maybe I'm not drinking as much as I think I am. Well, I mean, you are drinking more than I will say most of my clients mm -hmm. drink. Um, but like everybody's genetic tolerance to caffeine is different. Yeah. It seems like yours is pretty high, especially mm -hmm. if you're not having the like withdrawal from it. Um, but the fact that you, I mean, just the fact that you feel like you need this constant energy yeah. is more of the information that I want. And I would love for you to just feel really energized and not have to drink all of the coffee. Yeah. Same. So <laughs> we'll try it. We'll try to re remedy that today. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm just going to pepper you with questions. Yeah. And go for it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to learn all about your exercise, like your typical schedule, mm -hmm. and then we'll take a look at your diet log. Okay. And so for the people on YouTube, you are going to be able to see Leah's, um, diet log as well. I asked her to, um, sorry to talk about you in third person. Oh, yeah, no, but <laughs> I asked her to fill out some days in this app that I use called my fitness pal. And she did a great job and did it's like six days in there, which is super helpful. The more data we can have, the better, but so that's kind of where we're going to go with this. And, uh, at the end of it, I will give you some really clear cut suggestions for okay. changes to make. And the way that I work is I'm not generally in, like, I don't make big changes for people or big mm -hmm. suggestions. And usually climbers don't really need that. They just need little tweaks here and there. So yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at. Cool. Okay. Ready. Ready. Okay. So, um, tell me about your typical schedule, uh, through the week. How much do you work? What do you do for work? And, um, how much do you exercise? Um, so I'm kind of like taking the summer off a little bit from like, uh, my regular job. Um, so I've been, we opened a little bakery stand here. So I've been doing that in the mornings, uh, maybe like three to four hours in the mornings, but maybe three or four times a week also. Um, as far as exercise, I guess a little bit here and there. I keep trying to get into running, so I've been doing that maybe like once or twice a week. Um, and then like a little bit of other training, but I don't really have like a very good training routine, I guess. Okay. Um, but yeah. And then how much are you climbing? Um, probably like three to four days a week. Um, and then I guess I've been kind of counting like the hike up to the crag as exercise. It's like a 45 minute hike up. Okay. And is it hard? Uh, it's pretty straight up the whole way. Okay. So you're kind of counting that as our exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 45 minutes straight uphill with a backpack on. Yeah. That's exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so about an hour and a half of hiking three to four days a week. Yeah. And then okay. I've gone up by myself too on like non-climbing days. So okay, so sometimes... probably about three to four. Yeah. Okay. Three to four, sometimes more than that. Yeah. Okay. And when you go running, how much are you running? Um, usually out for like half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, but it's not like running the whole time. So I'm not quite in shape enough yet to run that whole way. Um, maybe like three ish miles. Okay. And are those on your rest days? Yeah. Okay. And let's see anything else, any yoga, any, anything else? Um, I've been doing a little bit of yoga. This is, I've been like feeling stiff from climbing. Um, do like an occasional ab workout um and then we do have a moon board here so i've been getting on that maybe like once or twice a week also and is that on your outdoor climbing days or uh no the outdoor climbing days were pretty much there the whole day so kind of okay. spent by the time we get back all right so the moon board is on your rest days from outdoor climbing yeah okay so let's just go through this uh, Monday through Sunday. So okay. to get a really clear yeah, yeah. idea. Um, what uh, what did you do yesterday? Yesterday was Monday. Uh, yesterday was a rest day and I did nothing because <laughs> I slept really poorly. 
uh, I guess, Sunday night. Um, so it was just like felt, oh, I did go for a hike. Actually, that's a lie. Um, like an hour long hike, mostly flat though. Um, okay. And then, so that was what we did yesterday. It was kind of a rest day, hangout. Um, and then today we went up and climbed. We were up there from like nine to about 4.30. And in that time, about how many pitches are you doing? Um, about four or five, um, sometimes up to six, but that's rare. I think today we did about five. I'm assuming you're projecting? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then did you do anything else on that day? Uh, no. Okay. Then um, do you want to go forward or do you want to take me back to um, last week? Probably back would be, I think I've got that slightly better down. Um, so I guess Sunday was another climbing day, um, about the same. I think we were up there like nine to three, nine to four maybe. Um, and did about four to five pitches again. Okay. And um, Saturday? Saturday. I'm going to have to check my phone. I think I took a picture or two. Otherwise, I don't remember. Um, Saturday. I think we climbed a little bit that morning. Um, just like a couple pitches. And then had some family obligations Saturday afternoon. Okay. And Friday? Um, Friday kind of rained all day. Um, I think went for a run on Friday. And then did the, like a yoga flexibility circuit workout. Okay. And Thursday? Thursday. This is hard to remember. I um, wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> want to say we probably climbed Thursday again, like maybe just in the afternoon on Thursday. Okay. Um, we've been kind of like, the weather's been really terrible up here for like the past month. So we've just been on any really sunny day. We're just kind of climbing as much as we can um, mm -hmm. just because we've had so much rain for a okay. bit, but and then... It kind of varies. We're trying to stick to like climb on the weekends and then a re two rest days during the week and then like a training day or something. But Okay. Well, so then what on. happened on Wednesday? Um, Probably also a rest day, I'm assuming. And when you say rest day, what did you actually Kind do? of like active rest day is like do chores or something like that. Um, I probably worked in the morning. Um, and then I have a dog, so took him for a walk. Um, and then keep telling myself I'll get better about doing like some flexibility routine or something, but I haven't, haven't done that yet. Okay. So you said that you were moonboarding one or two times a week. Do you think you did that at some point? Yeah. Um, maybe last Tuesday or so. Last or it might have might have been Wednesday evening also. Okay, so on a rest day you would moonboard. Possibly. I feel like I should have kept a schedule down. <laughs> okay. Um <clears throat> Okay. So I'm just gonna read this back to you. Monday, yeah, yeah. one hour flat hike. Tuesday, hike and climb nine to four thirty, four to six pitches. Sounds good so far. Wednesday, walk, moon board. Yeah. Thurs Thursday, hike and climb half day. Yep. Friday, run and yoga. Yep. Saturday, climb two pitches and hike up to the crag. Yep. Sunday, hike and climb nine to three or four or four to five pitches. Yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. Okay, so that's one two, three, four, five days of climbing and no rest days. 
Yeah, there was probably, I think, Friday might have been. Well. When I say rest days, I oh, mean, like, nothing. Not, like, a full day, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is something we can talk about right now. Like, I'm not a climbing coach, but I talk to a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, nobody would ever expect you to not be fatigued on this schedule. Mm-hmm. And nobody would expect you to climb at your potential on this schedule either. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And especially when you're projecting outside and you're trying to train and you're moonboarding and you're running and you're doing all these things. Like the fact that you are going to caffeine a lot is not surprising mm -hmm. at all to me. Okay. And I know that that's really hard for people to hear and I don't expect you to do anything, but if I were to give you my unsolicited advice, which yeah. I guess this is solicited, but yeah. as far as your exercise goes, I would definitely say, take a couple rest days, like full rest days during okay. the week. Yeah. We're like taught that more is better in ways. And we think mm -hmm. that more is better, but this is how you're going to climb 513 is by resting more. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I, yeah. You're just tired. Cause you're yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it might be contributing to your lack of sleep. You might just be overtrained. Okay. Yeah. So we'll look at your diet too, to talk about the okay. sleep stuff. Sounds good. Okay. So then your daily schedule, can you just tell me like around the times when you wake up, when you eat and when you go to sleep? Yeah. Um, so I usually wake up for, uh, anywhere from like six to seven 30 probably. Okay. Um, and then have like coffee and then breakfast kind of went on to like 8 30 9 or probably anywhere from like 8 to 9 breakfast um and then lunch is probably anywhere from like noon to 1 30 or so um and then dinner probably same range of like 5 to 6 30 and I try to like be in bed by like 9 and some days I'm better about going to sleep at like 9 30 10 ish and then other days I just can't go to sleep mm. um but I think that's more of like a anxiety thing at night sometimes or just like keep thinking about things throughout the whole day or night um but mostly if I like do a more chill activity like read instead of watch tv I think that helps me a lot so okay so typically, I mean, there's like a difference between what we want to happen and what yeah. happens. <laughs> um, what what time do you typically go to sleep? Um, probably like nine thirty or ten ish, I would say. Okay. That's maybe, when you actually are sleeping. Maybe like ten thirty. So actually asleep. All right, cool. Okay, great. And then are there any snacks in there during the day? Oh yeah. Um usually we usually have like a fairly large breakfast so not like many stacks until the afternoon um and then probably like depends on like climbing days i just like eat small meals throughout the day i guess um and like non-climbing days or, like a snack around like two to three ish okay snack. and then you'll snack throughout the day when you're climbing yeah okay yeah, I usually have like breakfast and then snack throughout the day, climbing and then dinner or like the two big meals, I guess. Okay. Cool. And then let's talk a little bit about your energy levels. So when do you, well, are there times during the day when you notice the low energy more than others? Um, sometimes immediately after like waking up, I feel like a little groggy. Um, not sure if that's just cause I haven't like fully woken up yet. Um, and then definitely like sometimes in the afternoon, like I'll start to feel like kind of draggy. Mm -hmm. Like um, after lunch or before? Yeah. Like after lunch. Okay. Okay. And any, t any other times? Um, sometimes like it's kind of like a constant, like fatigue not like debilitating or anything but it's I don't feel as energetic as I would like to I guess mm -hmm. okay and then I didn't ask you this in the beginning but how tall are you and how much do you weigh 
I am like five six, five seven, I think. Um, and like one thirty five, one forty. Okay. And are you content with your weight and body composition? Uh, mostly, I think. Okay. It'd be nice so to like. I guess get more strength. Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe like a little leaner, just for like climbing. And I know I store like a lot of my weight in my legs, too. So. Sometimes it's like I feel, my legs feel heavy, I guess, but those are more days. Like I'm also tired. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just high gravity days, but yeah, <laughs> but like, this isn't something that you want to focus on. I'm assuming not but like you're... entirely, I guess, but you know, I feel like if I lost like five pounds, that would probably be helpful for my climbing, but not something I'm like, this is number one priority, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. So I'd like to take a look at your diet now. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. So for everybody who's listening <clears throat> to this, I'll try to do as good of a job as I can with just describing what I'm seeing, but you can't always just find it um, on YouTube. Okay. Can you see that? Me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. So I'm starting with uh, Thursday, August 10th. So what I'm going to do here is ask you some questions about like what kind of exercise you did that mm -hmm. day and um, sometimes even about when you might have eaten these things. So Thursday, okay. August 10th was uh, two Thursdays ago, actually. Mm -hmm. And so do you have any idea what you did on this day for exercise? Uh, I just looked at my phone and I have a few pictures of <laughs> us at the crag. So <laughs> went climbing. <laughs> All right, great. So let's see. Your breakfast was two eggs some bread and some cheese. Is that pretty standard or? Um, it's kind of varies. I think we have, I would say a lot of variety in what we're eating at the moment. Um, we haven't really had like a standard breakfast, I guess. Okay. Um, that's okay. We'll, we'll look through those days and yeah. find those variations there. So what I'm looking for here is your total calories per meal, mm -hmm. your total carbs, fat, protein, and sugar per meal, which we can see way better on the computer than on your phone. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also looking, so I'm looking at that per meal. And then I'm also looking at that per day, like for okay. your totals. Yeah. And then because I pay for my fitness pal, when I mm -hmm. click on this, I can see your percentages, Okay. which is really helpful because yeah. we can also see it here per meal. So, um, I'm going to go through this day and then I'm going to go through a couple other days and then I'm going to make some observations. Okay. So lunch. And oh, go ahead. Another thing. I'm not sure. I might've gotten like the amounts incorrect. I tried to guess on what things were. Um, so it's might be close, but it also might be more. I might okay. have eaten more than what I put down. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So this lunch and you were up at the crag this day. So you had an yep. energy drink, you had pickled beets, tuna, a can of tuna, and then the snacks were peach, one peach, and then an IPA. I'm assuming that was after when you got Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I think on this day, I was driving that day too. So I didn't get to the crag till like early afternoon okay so you did less fewer pictures than yeah normal. yeah mm -hmm. okay so that means that you had this lunch when you were driving and then you went um, up to the crag i think i had like a late breakfast and then drove and then hiked up okay and, and there then... should be coffee in there too i think i didn't forget forgot to add the coffee and creamers okay so sorry about that that's okay. And then this dinner was mixed greens, 
fish fillet and mustard. Yeah. A crispy fish fillet. Is that battered? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that this is four fillets. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you didn't have 480 calories worth of fish or did you? Um, I might have. We okay. been doing this like kind of thing where you get like one of those giant salad tubs uh -huh. from the grocery store and then just like dump the fish sticks on it and eat it that way so okay right. yeah <laughs> sounds okay, gross but it's actually pretty tasty oh no i don't think it sounds gross it's just <laughs> abnormal for what else i'm seeing on here so that's why i said that no i'm not there's no judgment there whatsoever yeah <laughs> okay so but the crispy fish fillet does mean that it's battered so there's some there's a breading on it yeah or okay. like a like a fried thing yeah yeah, yeah. breading okay cool so then we have 14 121 calories for the day, 118 grams of carbs, 57 grams of fat, and 69 grams of protein, and 31 grams of sugar. In the percentages here, we're 37 carbs, 41 fat, 22 protein. And we'll get into what that means in just a few minutes here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move on to Friday. Do you know Sounds what you did good. this day? Um, let me see if I have any pictures. Um, I think probably went up and climbed let me check real quick that was friday the 12th friday the 11th the 11th um went up and climbed uh got up there around noon i believe mm -hmm. and then stayed till about four okay so did a few pitches yeah. Or four, maybe. Do yeah. You, like, do you have any idea how many you would do in that amount of time? Um, probably like three to four, I would okay. think. Okay, so this day you had non-fat Greek yogurt, some jam, and peanut butter for breakfast, which is different than the day before. Your lunch was the Bang Energy drink, protein powder, coffee, um, sliced pickled beets and tuna. And then your snacks were coffee, creamer, pickles, and the beer when you got back, I'm assuming. Yeah. And then your dinner was crispy fish filet, the salads, and then peanut butter and oatmeal raisin cookie. So this day we had 390 calories for breakfast, 268 for lunch, 797 for dinner, and 275 for snacks. So if your snacks minus the 200 for the IPA were about 75 calories. And this day we had 41% carbs, 37 fat, 22 protein, 68 grams of sugar, and 1730 calories, which you can see is a pretty big difference from the day before where we had 1400 something. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed on like some days, I guess like days after I do an activity, sometimes I'm hungrier than like the days I am climbing. I Sorry, guess if the I'm day like, after, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The day after I like climb a lot, I sometimes feel hungrier. Yeah. So let's just talk about that because this yeah. is really common. Um, You can see, so we'll just go back to this Thursday. When so for a person your size and just as a caveat like everybody's caloric needs are different mm -hmm. like a person who's exactly 135 pounds five six five seven your same age could have a very different caloric need like a thousand difference you yeah. know than you but knowing like having worked with a lot of people this 1400 calories for a person your size doing the amount of activity that you're doing is pretty low. Mm -hmm. And so I would have expected, and I would have even asked, how did you feel this day? And how did you feel the next day? Yeah. Because most of the time your body's going to be like, what are you doing to me? I need way more than this. And so it's going to be a calling out for calories, but also mm -hmm. It's going to be calling out for carbs, especially a lot of times okay. people have sugar cravings the next day mm -hmm. and it's mostly going to make you feel really tired. 
that okay. that day or the next day. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And so you might start noticing, like if you did continue logging, just even mm-hmm. for like a couple of weeks, you could say like, all right, I did this amount of exercise. I ate this many calories and, and then I was this hungry. And the next day I was this hungry and, mm-hmm. you know, or this tired and start putting those things together. But you shouldn't need to, because when, like, if we balance these things out, you're just going to start feeling better. Okay. So let's just go that through another good. couple of days and then yeah, yeah. we'll start making some diagnoses here. So this day you had the second day on Friday, you had 1730 mm-hmm. calorie, 162, 66 fats, 89 protein, 68 sugar. Okay. And then the next day was Saturday. And do you know what you did on this day for exercise? Um, keep looking at my like step counter on my phone. Mm. This is like, the same amount of steps to go up to the crag. Um, that was the 12th. Yeah. Um, looks like also up to climb um from about 11 to 5 ish 4 ish okay. i think um probably 4 to 5 pitches that day all right so this day your breakfast was peanut butter coffee creamer a muffin and a protein peanut butter protein crispy bar so yeah. it was, then your lunch was carrots, organ, protein powder, and coffee. Your sna- no snacks that day. And then dinner was chicken drumstick, cookies, IPA, and beans and rice. Okay, so let's just get into this here. Yeah. The good things are that your breakfasts are sometimes a good size and Mm -hmm. you're eating three meals a day and you're not really eating an excessive amount of sugar. So those are all good. Obviously the foods that you're choosing are generally really whole foods. I don't have any, anything to say about like the foods that you're eating. And this is super common with climbers. Like climbers generally are really good at eating whole foods they're making their most of their food and they're Mm -hmm. a lot of times having three meals a day so those are all good um and now i'm gonna ask you yeah so having done this exercise of logging your diet which i know Mm -hmm. is really tedious so thank you for doing it (laughs) um what what did you learn and what do you think could change uh i guess like while doing it i noticed that like we rarely have the same like meal for breakfast, I guess. And it varies a lot. Um, I feel like some days I had like a larger breakfast and then ended up like not really eating that much for lunch or during the day, um, which maybe like affected how I felt or like my climbing that day too. Um, And then would have like a larger dinner at night too, I guess sometimes if I didn't eat enough during the day Mm -hmm. um so I guess that what was there was more to that question oh just like what you think could change um I guess like knowing like what I should be eating to get like the most I can for climbing days and rest days um like usually while I'm climbing I guess I don't have like I don't like to eat like big meals during the day just because it feels like it weighs me down and like makes my stomach hurt kind of a little bit if I'm like eating something huge and then climbing hard Mm -hmm. um so I like prefer like snacks throughout the day or like a protein shake or something I guess um and then sometimes like a bigger breakfast the like before we go climbing and then like usually like a larger dinner at night I guess Mm -hmm. um but just like more knowledge on like if I eat this, this will help me perform better at this time or things like that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. So I do think that you're right. Like the consistency thing could help you, I think, because Mm -hmm. let's take a look at Monday, the 14th, for instance, you had 19 for your breakfast, you had 
um, blueberry pie, non-fat Greek yogurt, peanut butter, and coffee and creamer. So this was 527 calories, which I think is an appropriate amount of calories for breakfast for you. Mm -hmm. And you had 66 grams of carbs, 37 of which were sugar from the blueberry pie and 19 grams of protein. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, let's start with the, pro, the protein, the, in general, most days you are not getting enough. Yeah. In my experience. And so like I would shoot for around 30 grams per meal, and then you're okay. going to get a little bit extra in your in your snacks. And mm -hmm. this is the number one thing that helps people have better energy yeah. is having a more protein in their breakfast and B more protein overall and okay. very evenly dispersed. So this breakfast, you had 19 grams of protein. Let's look back on Sunday. You had 11 grams of protein mm -hmm. in your breakfast. This was mm -hmm. a really small breakfast too. You just had protein powder, coffee with creamer and honey crisp, um, apple. And so there were 11 grams of protein in there. And then mm -hmm. Saturday we had 18 grams. One day you had 30, 25 on Friday. Okay. And that came from the yogurt and the peanut butter. And then this day you had the eggs, the cheese and the bread. And that was 33 grams. Mm -hmm. So this kind of breakfast is going to be really nice for you here. Cause it's okay. really balanced, right? Like yeah. you could even have more carbs or you could put a piece of fruit in this on a mm -hmm. climbing day. Because we want to start our day off with plenty of food. It's mm -hmm. really counterintuitive how we do eat compared to what we do to ourselves during the day, right? Yeah. Because your tendency to have a medium-sized breakfast, a very small amount of lunch, and then a pretty big dinner is yeah. totally normal. I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And people have energy issues because they're not fueling themselves through the day. Like, we need actual calories to do all the work that you're doing yeah. and you're not giving yourself enough. And so of course you're going to feel tired mm -hmm. and this will also affect your sleep because your blood sugar isn't managed well during the day. And that causes cortisol levels to increase adrenaline to increase like all of the stress hormones. And so then mm -hmm. you're just spinning at the end of the day. And sometimes you might even find that your sleep is interrupted during the evening, during the night when you're sleeping and it's because your blood sugar is still being mismanaged because it was mismanaged during the day. And okay. that carries through into the evening when you might have these blood sugar lows and your body responds by spiking these stress hormones. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah. And you're also spiking your stress, stress hormones by drinking all the caffeine that you do. Mm -hmm. So every time you drink it, you're just telling your body that something stressful is happening and that it should secrete cortisol, adrenaline and everything. Okay. And so you just got like more of these hormones circulating in your body uh, every day. And so it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that you're having these sleep issues. Okay. I have a lot more to say, but what do you have to say so far? What do you think? Uh, yeah, that all makes sense. I've heard like bigger breakfasts are like a good idea and like kind of like, I guess, consistency in what you're eating also. Um, but I guess just haven't done those things like everything you said makes sense and I'm like oh yeah I should be doing that but yeah 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 well that's good sometimes it you just takes a little nudge from hearing yeah. it out loud from somebody or like hear somebody else say yeah like what you're thinking you should be doing I guess. Right, yeah yeah <laughs> but it's also about like exactly how you implement it right mm -hmm. and it, it needs to be delicious it needs to be easy and doable and yeah. so we'll make that happen um, let's look at this day here on Thursday, you had the, for lunch, basically up at the crag, you had mm -hmm. an energy drink, beets, tuna, and a peach. So all of that together was about, um, 170 calorie, 50, wait, 160 calories, mm -hmm. which is nothing. Right. And yeah. so I would expect on this day, even though you had this in your words, big breakfast, which is actually just a normal size breakfast. Yeah. You, I, I would expect for your energy to, to have been pretty low that day mm -hmm. and for you to maybe even be like shaky on climbs. And you're probably like, why am I getting pumped so fast? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> things like that. And like, I want to do another pitch, but I just feel so tired. That's the kind yeah. of thing that I would expect. 
The other reason for that is because your lunch only had 10 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. And so it's just not sustaining you. Yeah. The only saving grace was that you had some peach, you had peaches, which gave you like a tiny bump of sugar, Mm -hmm. which is going to help you on those days. Um, But you on this day could have had, like, you could have brought this same kind of sandwich up or you said that you don't like to eat big meals because they weigh you down. And the thing with that is that, um, most of the time people are bringing foods that do make them feel bloated. Mm -hmm. And so then we have to experiment with what foods don't make you feel bloated. That makes sense. And eating just enough of it so that you are fueled, but not overly stuffed. So if the bread, for instance, makes you feel bloated. What about bringing up a container of rice and chicken and vegetables Mm -hmm. and having that be like your main source of food and then having like peaches and other sugary things on the side to give you though that like energy boost that we use as climbers, which is glucose. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. What kinds of foods can you think of that do not make you feel bloated or weighed down? Uh, Just like the breakfasts. Um, You're doing a lot of yogurt and peanut butter lately. Um, It's more like quantity, I guess, of food that makes me feel like that. Or like, I feel like bread sometimes does, but we don't really eat. We haven't been eating too much of that. Um, trying to think fruits usually are pretty good or like the canned tunas and meats are good, Mm -hmm. but but maybe on like a wrap or something would be slightly more beneficial. Right. Yeah. Cause you're not really getting that many carbs. Like you can, when you're up there, we really do need these carbs Mm -hmm. for our energy, but also to keep our blood sugar really balanced. Mm -hmm. And I like to have a combination of starch and sugar, and you don't really have that much starch, right? You're having these sliced pickled beets, which gives you the majority of your carbs and it's Mm -hmm. all sugar. And then if, and then you have this protein powder that has 12 grams of carbs, but that's really negligible with the amount of work that you're doing. Yeah. So it looks like, oh, you're getting 30 grams of carbs, but they're not very substantial. Okay. And so, um, you know, if you wanted to bring up the yogurt and put some granola in it and Mm -hmm. some protein powder and not make it non-fat, make it have some fat in it so that it's a really balanced meal. Yeah. If you could have that up there and just bring it in a Tupperware and put it into a tiny little cooler pack. Mm -hmm. So it it doesn't go bad, right? Yeah. Because you know, you can digest it. You know, it tastes good. It's going to be palatable when you're Mm -hmm. like climbing and even put some fruit in there or whatever. But like I said, the yogurt with some fat in it, Mm -hmm. then some um, granola, because that's going to give you some starch too, because it's oats. Yeah. And then some fruit in there for some extra sugar and um like anything you could bring peanut butter packets Mm -hmm. you could bring sandwiches like you said or like a a rice wrap or a whatever kind of tortilla you want with some turkey or some chicken leftover whatever you want Mm -hmm. that makes sense so does that sound doable at all to you yeah i think also just thinking of this now like another concern is like i know i'm not getting enough protein i guess throughout the day and I've been trying to do more, but I guess I'm like not sure how to get protein consistently throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just talk about your breakfast, lunches, and dinners. So like this day you got 89 grams, mm-hmm. which for a person your size, I would want you to be getting at least a hundred grams a day. Okay. And there was one day when you got 120 and we could talk about how you did that on that day. Mm-hmm. I mean, you did it. So yeah, here. (laughs) So this day you had 53 grams in your lunch, which was from venison and beans and rice and two eggs. Mm -hmm. That's a really heavy lunch. Um, and that's fine. It's great, but there's, 
it, it could have been a little bit more balanced where like you mm -hmm. got enough protein from this venison sausage yeah. and you could have just had like the beans and rice or just the rice if you wanted uh, mm -hmm. the beans and rice is fine. Cause that gives you all this starch and some protein. And then instead of the eggs, you could have had like, um, some vegetables. Yeah. You know? And yeah, so then we're sense. getting into some more nutrients there, mm -hmm. some micronutrients. And then that would have been a little bit less, uh, calories. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not saying you should be on a diet, like restricting calories at all. What I want is to even things out. So this lunch was yeah. 700 calories. And part of the reason that this was so big is because your breakfast was only 200 and that's when you're going to notice, like, I am mm -hmm. so hungry for lunch or I am yeah. so hungry for dinner. And then you kind of overeat. Whereas mm -hmm. if you were to just eat 500, 550, 600 calories per meal, mm -hmm. then we're getting into like 1500 to 1800 calories in meals. And then on top of that, we're having snacks, which is yeah. a lot of times what you're doing anyway. So we're not really eating more. It's just, it's just, uh, disperse better over the day. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So like some of these protein calories should have been in your breakfast instead. Yeah. And when you have, um, protein powder for your protein source, that's fine. But the 10 grams is just not enough. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to do two scoops or two and a half scoops and then something along okay. with it, like okay. some nuts or some whatever into the, yeah. the drink. Okay. Um, and again, like this breakfast, it was just the coffee, the protein powder, the creamer and the apple. There's just got to be more substance. And most of the time mm -hmm. you do do that. And so I'm not going to harp on it too much. Then the dinner, you had the tenderloin that had and the stuffed pepper and the, all of that was mm -hmm. 33 grams. And so that was great, right? Yeah. Um, again, there weren't that many carbs in this dinner. Mm -hmm. And so it could have been a little bit more evenly spread out. Okay. I mean, you don't have to have a ton of carbs in your dinner. Okay. I'm mostly concerned with your breakfast, lunch, and snack. Cause that's when you're fueling yourself for activity. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying your dinner should be no carbs. This is actually okay. Cause this amount of carbs, you were still at just like 34%, which is a little bit low for a big day mm -hmm. out. Um, but you know, your, if your breakfast had been bigger, your lunch had been smaller and your dinner had been just a little bit bigger, then you would have been better off, I think. Okay. So like trying to get like even amounts of all of the nutrients throughout the day should be more yeah. my goal rather than like huge breakfast, like protein mounts and then nothing for lunch and then like all of my protein again at dinner. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to look at a different day. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Like this amount of calories for you, 1461. It's just too low. Okay. And I mean, you can play around with that, but it mm -hmm. worries me. Like that amount of calories worries me for a person mm -hmm. your size. Because like, if you're doing as much exercise as you say you're doing, which I, which you are, like, I'm not doubting that then you, and you're eating this many calories. Like that's when we start to get into hormonal issues. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your body will start to go into starvation mode where it'll hold on to fat. Yeah. And, and it doesn't let it go because it's like, this isn't enough. I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to this. Okay. And you might start to see like thyroid issues and adrenal issues just because you're kind of living on stress hormones. Yeah, that makes sense. And the other thing here is the reason that you can get away with having such little, like if I ate the amount that you eat at lunch and snacks, I would die. <laughs> <laughs> and especially if I was climbing, like I eat yeah. so much food and it's because I do not consume caffeine. And mm -hmm. the caffeine is also an appetite suppressant. Yeah. And so, yes, it, you're drinking it at breakfast and you're eating breakfast. So it's, you're, you're having it at the same time as your breakfast, which is good because it allows your body to eat as much as it wants to at mm -hmm. breakfast. But then for the rest of the day, when you're having your five, six cups of coffee, 
um, you're just completely suppressing, not completely, but you're suppressing your appetite yeah. quite a bit. Okay. And then by the sense. time dinner comes around, you're like, oh, I'm really hungry because the yeah. drugs have worn off. Yeah, I've definitely like noticed like throughout the day, especially like climbing days, I feel like if I'm active and doing something, I don't think about eating as much, I guess. And then yeah. by the time we like finish up for the day and like are packing up, I'm like, I need to eat right now. <laughs> yes. And that's so common. It's so yeah. common. And this is honestly why I chose you for this is because I see this same thing over and over and mm -hmm. over. And so what I, what I recommend that you do is like you said, try to make your meals be as consistent with each other as you can. Mm -hmm. So aim for five to 600 calories per meal okay. and try to have the percentages work out to be around, um, well, let's just go for grams here. So with yeah. protein, try to make it have around 30 grams per meal. Okay. Okay. And then with your fat, you're going to want around 35%. And let's see. So like 20 to 25 grams of fat per meal. Okay. And then like 50 grams of carbs or something like that. And if okay. you're going out climbing, do whatever you want, like have more yeah. carbs. <laughs> Um, but that, those are like some very basic guidelines and that okay. could be for each meal yeah. and those are really easy to hit and try to make most of them be starch and not mm -hmm. as much just sugar. Like it's okay, okay to have sugar while you're yeah. out climbing. That's fine. But you got to focus on the starch too. Okay. And you're going to get these protein, protein grams from your eggs, your cheese, your mm -hmm. yogurt, protein powder, all of the meats that you have some in beans and rice. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's just in the, the amounts that you're having, yeah. you know, like if okay. you have tuna fish, you're bringing up two to three ounces and I don't love tuna. It's actually really high in mercury. So mm -hmm. you could go for canned salmon, canned chicken, whatever, if you like the canned or canned mm -hmm. sardines or mackerel or whatever. But you can also do deli meats or leftovers or whatever. Yeah. So you're going to okay. want like four to five ounces instead of just okay. two to three. Okay. And then, oh my God, you're eating bear meat? Yeah. My dad's a hunter. So he like, <laughs> he gave us a whole bunch of bear meat, which nice. I've never had before, but it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. It fits your background very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So. So like all of the meats, that's where you're going to get that from. You just have to mm -hmm. be really intentional about how much you're putting in e each meal. Okay. Okay. And that then, um, so those are the main suggestions. And I think if you do this, you're going to feel less like you need to bring as much caffeine up there with mm -hmm. you, if any at all. I mean, caffeine yeah. is going to be a performance enhancer, whatever, but mm -hmm. five to six cups of it, including your cut your energy yeah. drinks it's like it's quite a bit yeah and it can throw your hormones off quite a bit okay and your sleep and all the things all so that, i think yeah. like if you stopped i'm not saying stop drinking it but mm -hmm. do experiment with going down okay in the amount and then watch your sleep right so like yeah when you sleep poorly ask yourself what did i eat yesterday did i mm -hmm. eat enough did i get enough protein did i skip basically meals uh, yeah. and all those things. Um, and when you sleep well, ask yourself, what did I eat? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's for good. that day and the day before that. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Okay. Um, no, that sounds good. Everything you're saying like makes sense. I'm like, oh yeah, obviously I should be doing that. But I guess like it doesn't make sense until somebody tells you that it makes sense. Yeah. Did yeah. You? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes I know, sense. right? It, like it's not rocket <laughs> yeah. science. It's yeah. just little details and we get into these habits, right? Yeah. And then like I've had the habit of like not really bringing that much to eat climbing because I don't feel like I need want to. And then having someone be like, "Well, you should bring more." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So some good breakfasts for you could be the bread, the cheese and the eggs. Mm -hmm. That's fine. If you wanted to have the bread, 
uh, some sausage and cheese. That would also be fine. Okay. The yogurt, maybe with some protein powder in the mm-hmm. yogurt with some fat source, whether that's peanut butter or just non, non-fat yogurt. Yeah. And then some sort of starch, whether that's granola, oats, um, toast, whatever you want. Okay. And I know that we're told to not have carbs, like carbs are bad, but they are not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are really just not like we yeah, have yeah. to have them. And when we have them in the right amounts and the right types, they help us climb better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for your lunches, we talked about a bunch of stuff yeah. and your dinners are generally okay. Okay. And I think you should be good, but do you have an idea of like changes that you might make this week specifically? Um, probably trying to like bring more snacks or like a main meal for climbing days I guess and then focusing on trying to make sure I have like more even nutrition I guess throughout Mm -hmm. like each meal rather than like having a heavy heavy dinner or breakfast where like that's where all of my proteins coming from rather than like not from the lunch I guess is two things right yeah I'll try to do and maybe cut back on the coffee a little bit okay (laughs) (laughs) all right great and as a nutritionist I have to say I do think that eating more vegetables would be good for you I think it's good for everyone yeah unless those vegetables are making you feel bloated or whatever but you can figure out vegetables that don't do that yeah for sure so yeah like anytime you can add them into your lunches okay. or your dinners or even your breakfast. That'd be great. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Any questions about um, anything? That all sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah. I think I'm probably going to try and like track my food and like maybe a note of like what I did that day too. I think that'll be helpful for me to like figure out what days I'm tired or more tired and what I ate and what I'm doing too, to kind of see all of that. Cool. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. And how much water are you drinking? Um, like two to three Nalgene's worth. So it's like 32 ounces per water bottle. Okay. Yeah. That's Um, pretty good. Great. Okay. Well, I I think that we covered everything and if you don't have any questions then i think we're good but i would love an update to see how you're doing like even in the next couple weeks to see Mm -hmm. if any of these changes make any difference for you yeah definitely i'm looking forward to actually trying this out and seeing how it works yeah yeah and okay one more question for you yeah yeah could you see yourself changing anything about how much you are exercising um think like more of like a structured training program like for climbing more specific um but possibly more of like I find it hard to like not do anything all day for like a full rest day but maybe like not a hike and change it to like a regular walk or something that's slightly less intense yeah um yeah so just one note on that when because you're hiking so much and you're doing it uphill with a backpack Mm -hmm. on like it's really leg intensive yeah and so your body is actually storing a lot of glucose in your legs or glycogen in your legs Mm -hmm. and then you're running on top Mm -hmm. of that and so it's also storing more glycogen in your legs Mm -hmm. And your legs are also constantly inflamed because you're doing so much with them. And all of that is to say that you are storing a lot of water in your legs. Okay. That makes sense. And so if you want to get rid of the, the extra ness in your legs, like you can certainly do that by not running. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Like you don't need to be running. You're going uphill for an hour and, you know, four or five days. Like it's a lot. Yeah, I know we're told that we should run by society, everyone, (laughs) but I can tell you that you don't need to do it to be a better climber. And it's not helping you lose weight in your legs if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So 
Everyone hear that, please. <laughs> don't have to be a runner. <laughs> no, you don't. You you are uh, a hiker. You are yeah. like an elite hiker. Yeah. <laughs> but that's... I always think, I'm like, I think I'd like running more if it was just like hiking because I've never liked running, but I'm like, I should do it. Yeah. I mean, there are so many other things you could be doing at that time, including mm -hmm. the mobility that you really want yeah. to incorporate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That might mm -hmm. be more beneficial or to like some upper body something instead yeah or or mobility even with your legs I mean mm -hmm. I think that most of all like you trying to do full rest days and also logging like okay I had a full rest day didn't do anything how did I climb the next day? Cause I yeah. think that if you continually do that and you make these changes in your diet, you're going to see like probably a really big difference in your climbing. Okay. Yeah. Which is a good Yeah. That makes sense. Cause I feel like we haven't really given ourselves like that many, like full, like full stop. Don't do anything rest days. Yeah. And then I'll like get up to the crag and be like, why am I so tired? So yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe a rest day would be a good thing. Yeah. And you're stoked, you know, it's commendable. Yeah. Congratulations on finding something you're super passionate about. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Most days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep that fire going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks again, Leah. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. Thank you being you. on the show. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. Learned a lot. Good. Excited to make it happen, I guess. Great. All right. Well, good luck with it all. I hope to hear from you soon. Yeah, cool. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.